Hello and welcome to another Jungle Coaching Review, and in this one we have a Diamond Vi versus a Diamond Coffers. Not the real Vega V2, you basically guarantee that much. And now we have, obviously, an interesting dynamic, because Vi is not really as much used in Diamond Plus. Um, I don't like the Q-second whatsoever, since her nerfs, obviously. Now, the reason why I don't like the Q first is because it's got such a decent little cooldown, and your E is obviously going to do significantly more with the charges, and uh, you just kind of save a bit of time and lose a bit more from the clear. And HP, of course. However, Carfus in the meantime, we'll do blue, grub, wolves, sequence to the top side. What can we do as Vi? What's our game plan here as Vi? To be able to actually deal with this sort of situation. Now, obviously, if you take Q level 1, which we didn't cover in this particular situation for invades, it, you know, you're, it's okay, it's serviceable, right? You're not going to be too compromised. But if you look at the timers here, look at this. The Syndra gets prior, which is great. We know that the Carfus starts on the bottom side, it's going to be probably to the top side. So, we go and get some deep vision. Hello, sir! Yes, we see you! And we put it over here. Now, most junglers by now, 232, in most MMRs, are crossing. Oh, look. Even in Diamond, they're crossing. This guy is already starting his red. Now, a good Carthus will finish around your 252, 255-ish, in theory, in practice, in a game, when you're looking around at things and uh, other stuff happens, you can be compromised a little bit. But... What a lot of junglers used to do, and I was included in this, especially as Volibear, and I would do this as Zyra for many years, before even this year when it was buffed, I would do a 3 camper into an invade on the Karthus, either on the red, or most likely in this particular case, the Krugs, because now he's already on the Krugs, he should be finishing. Look how long it takes you to get here, but there you go. You see what I'm saying? If you want help implementing this information into your own game, I have a free jungle improvement resource and a dedicated program. Playing a game, and I know how to make junglers convert from low elo to gold to emerald to diamond to master plus. If you want to climb faster than anybody you know, jungle diff every game you play, head to vokayu.gg. Why this stuff happens now? The Karthus here actually wards, he knows it's going to happen. He's super low, he has a smite available to him. So in his particular situation here, he's overkited to compensate. He knows that she's going to have to walk around this, he can see her walking around this. So don't sit in the open with no mana, low mana, and a smite available. He can very, very, very easily drag this to the left where his Kasante is, get this low enough to smite it, and the reason he's so low on mana is because the guy is just holding E. You gotta toggle that shit and time it properly. Holding E is not so good. We've talked about this in the private Discord quite a lot, but here there's no reason for him to die because we see her coming. We know she's gonna be walking around the wall trying to prime a flash key onto us. Obviously, this particular stage, we have our flash available. So there's no reason for us to get hit, okay? He has lost this himself. Therefore, if you're a full clearing jungle and you see someone do this and you foresee an invade and a death, drag the camp away so they have to spend more time collapsing. Take yourself out of vision into the brush where you know she cannot see you. Make sure you get that smite down on the big one. And if possible, get as many little ones as you can, but flash the CC, flash the stuff that's going to kill. You respect flash the Q, respect flash the blitz hook, the threshold. You gotta live. When you don't live, you compromise yourself. So, what do we like about the Vi? Good vision, good tracking, good collapse, good invade. We're able to snack this away from him. The Karthus obviously is going to go down to the bottom side. Does the Vi want to try and tower dive a Cassante here? Yes, she does. Not quite a least gaming, but obviously the thing we want to do. Hello, hello, hello. Q3 does hit. We'll Q into this knockback. Boom. Get an auto E. Beautiful. Very nicely done. Now, again, if you are compromised with your Q level 1 for the invades, great. I just really, really like to stress don't get caught up in those level 1 things because I just don't like being slow. I don't mean, like being compromised. Carthus now is really in a rough spot because he's going to respawn here. He's going to have to go for this. Now, we're against an Ash, obviously, which means the Ash can hit the Hulk shot across the map to show where he is. He doesn't seem to realize that uh, he was spotted, but, you know, just go ahead and take the Scuttle Crab. Vi can do the smart thing here, right? A couple things she can actually do. Firstly, we get the dive, we fall back down to the Scuttle Crab, we do our blue side. Great. But what that does is it opens up you to either a gank from the Karthus into the Syndra. Now you look to the bottom line and you think, okay, look, I've got to wait for the respawn timer of the Vi's camps here. We do ward this because the Syndra pulls back. She obviously kind of guesses maybe he might gank me here. So he's going to go to the bottom side here. He wants to stay out of vis vision as much as possible. Nice and tight where the pet does show briefly. This will spawn around your 4 minute 20, 4 minute 17 here from the Vi, which is actually pretty good. I mean, I know some jugglers are even slower than that. 
We do hit a W, but we do hit a W a little soon. Now they know we're here. We're coming from the front instead of the back. You know, Rakan should go in here when the when the Karthus is here. See, uh, awful, awful stuff. Basically, if you're the support, go the hell in. When the Karthus, who's not coming from the front, he's coming from the back. Go in, hit the CC, hit all your spells, and just get executed if possible. Space so that you don't get killed. If you get killed, that's fine. If your Karthus and Zaya are able to get two kills for your death, 100% worth. They just weren't on the same page with the dive. And Vi now, what she should have and could have maybe tried to do was do this dive, take this, reset and cut him off from here and deny these camps. But of course now by this stage he can fall backwards, right? He can fall backwards to his tier 2, tier 2, tier 2, and of course tier 2. So it's the mind games here from the Vi. Do we want to guarantee our own blue side and let him get away with this? Or do we want to cut him off and then maybe apply the pressure again? Because you could take your own tier 2 Krugs, tier 2 Raptors, cut through here and apply pressure to the Karthus as he reaches the top side. And if you've got Pry in the mid lane, which we do, you can shove him out of this quadrant again. Now he's going to go back to base and have really nothing to do. And he screwed it, basically. So that's why I would have preferred to see a bit more pressure maintenance from the Vi, but overall, nice invade, good kill. Karthus shouldn't have let it happen as we agree. Um, you know, it's a good invade, but the reason I don't like it is the following. If the enemy jungle is capable and they can kind of understand what you're doing, yeah, you, you know, you don't die here, and that's obviously the goal, so. Couple things to think about when you want to go for an invade, when you want to avoid an invade. How do you keep the pressure going? It's, it's give and take, right? It's jungling. There's good decisions, there's bad decisions, and sometimes you won't know until later on. But you can just make the best decision in the moment that you think will give you the best payout with the least risk, right? And so the invades are great. I tend to prefer some sort of clear system where I can cut off his first gank, Maybe take away the first scuttle and then invade on the second rotation. I do prefer that kind of pressure point because I feel like the second rotation camps are more important to steal because it delays level five, right? Like if a Karthus full clears and scuttles, gets a gank on the sideline as Trinomir activates his ultimate here. Obviously Vi is going straight to the top lane and hopefully gets something for this. You know, you got <laughs> Trinomir was very nice giving that up. Um, so yeah, I mean, imagine the guy full sequences, takes scuttle, gets a gank, goes back to base. He does this, he does this. He's level five, right? If you've now structured your game plan such that you can steal this Grump and Wolf camp, the guy's going to come down here level 4 and be like, uh, okay. And, you know, that's difficult to do if their timers are on point, but if you've created a prior situation where you can actually shove them out, it just forces him to be compromised. But in most of your games, the junglers like this are not coming back for the perfectly timed Grump and Wolf camp. They're wasting time. They're slow, right? Even a diamond. They're slow with their clears, they're slow with the gank, they're slow with this. They don't know where you began, so they go investigating your jungle. This gives you the 420 for free, and sometimes can give you this as free, for free as well. And then when you can do that, and I've explained this in jungle detail in the Vakari GG Discord server, how I did that to a Belveth. They're level 4, and they just wander around with nothing to do, because you completely compromised them. That was a master to Belveth, you know, so if you can do it to them, you can do it to diamonds, you can do it to platinum. So, I'm not exactly giving you, hey, what's the game plan to do that? That's... That's an advanced thing that you guys have to use, kind of all the principles applied, right? Like, you have to figure out, you know, what does my chamber want to do? How can I take away those camps from the enemy jungler based upon their mistakes? And therein is the thing as well. For this to work, this second rotation counter jungling, uh, they do tend to have to mis make a mistake, you know. But if they do get those camps on cooldown, like, hey, you've spawns 417, spawns 435, boom, boom. There's no room for you to counter jungle. But if they go for this, or for this, or for this, hey, you can take these away and maybe delay a six if they get nothing, you know? So that's just how we think about it. Do I deny a first rotation camp to deny level four? Do I deny a second rotation a clear to deny level five? Or do I deny part two of that second rotation or part three to deny level six? And those kind of three phases of counter jungling are just important to understand. Maybe worth talking about in a main channel video at some point, what I'm talking about here, just to visualize it a bit better. But if you're in Diamond, you understand what I mean? Hopefully you understand where this experience differential will come in. But most importantly, the Karthus says, look, I got nothing to do, man. I got a huge downtime between the full sequences. Got prior, got a situation here. Cool, I'll just take a dragon. I like that a lot. Use your downtime to get an objective. Use your downtime to do something that's valuable to you and your team. If you can invade and kill the enemy jungler, do so. But if you're feeling a little bit, yeah, I don't really want to do that. Snack a dragon. I did this the other day, too. Uh, I got invaded by... The entire enemy bot lane and mid lane, level 3, before my first grump. Literally, I'm just like, huh, that's, uh, okay. That's painful. 
And, you know, so what I did is you come back down here because enemy jungle also died during the excursion. They're going to go topside to this scuttle. So you go down to this one. Take the scuttle for free. You can steal tier 2 uh, camps as well. Those invades usually by that time. Snuck a dragon away. So Karthus here, having a not so good early game, just sequences, focuses on him, let's survive, get her shit, and it goes in ahead and snacks a dragon. Now, Finamir has a lead in the top lane. Karthus finishes the sequence and decides to go for this. The Vi sees this. You can see her rotating up here. Looks, here she comes. Do be careful. His ultimate is once more available. And obviously now you're inviting a bit of a 2v2. She's going to say, look, if he's safe, and the Karthus only has lost chapter plus seal, I know he's going to have to reset. So I can easily take this here Void Beetle. And we have pressure top lane. So this is, you know, returning that 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 play. He took the dragon and sequenced. I'm going to come out of base and take this Herald. Now I get RNG Scuttle, Blue, Gromp, Wolves. Can shatter this as necessary. Karthus here has got first strike. Point of first strike is to ult a little, more, a little bit more frequently. Not waiting for this perfect moment to get Dark Harvest stacks, right? You're ulting to get cash money gold as you press the button. So if you're not using it a bit more frequently and you're a first strike user, that's why you're broke when you're playing Karthus. Because you can look at it now and he's like, okay, 18 gold. <laughs> Ooh, it's not a lot of gold. That's too IRL for us, man. You know, we need to feel rich in game because uh, this economy ain't, ain't good for any of us. Does he have good pathing? Let's see. Come on, sir. Good pathing. Ooh, yes, yes. But the Syndra says, we saw you here because of Deep Vision, so we know you're here. And of course, now he's forced to back away. So, great example of how Deep Vision compromises these junglers who have big farming gaps. And the reason why we're looking at the lanes and the Karthus so much is because we're talking about Vi. You understand that? What we're looking at, okay, we're envisioning from the Vi's perspective, okay, what we're looking at is what Vi should be thinking about, even if she doesn't necessarily see everything, and how she should reconcile these things together. And that's what adds, and that's how it adds up. Now, of course, she's gone for the Umbral, which I kind of actually like, you know, the Umbral into the Triforce tag. Let's see exactly what she goes here, or whether she goes for a bit more uh, full damage focus. Karthus is going to be showing up here soon. She knows he's sequencing up. At this particular stage, I think that Karthus kind of thinks something might happen. Well done by the Vi. Well done. You know, make sure she hits everything. Ooh, some cash money is for the guy. Now we'll have a look in a second. Karthus? Oh, he's, he's not live. Syndra goes for this. <laughs> I sped it up to look for the first strike. And obviously this is the downside. Uh, Cassante shows up. Yeah, there you go. So... Always run away when you've been investing in that time quite a long time. Ooh, it's close. Mage battle. Mage battle. Whew. And nobody wins. <laughs> nobody wins. So Karthus went from 18 there on that all to... Excuse me, Riot Games. Can I please press the button? Thank you. Um, 23. <laughs> aish. Aish, 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 aish. Uh, we'll see at the end exactly how much first strike cash money he gets. But typically you've got to... It's more of a methodical, just ulting on cooldown kind of meme. There was a meme a couple years ago when this was the first, the, fr the rune first came out. And the suggestion was just ult off cooldown and get rich. Full clear, take objectives, ult off cooldown, take a few objectives when you can, and that's it. That was your game plan. And you come out of, you know, the mid game with like three items ahead of everybody else. Not quite, but... And then you just turbo astro them with your R, so... Like now you would want to press it for the Dark Harvest stack, right? On, on the Vi, you're hoping to get a Dark Harvest stack. And if you get nothing, it's like... You're getting nothing, right? You're just sitting with this rune that, that doesn't give you anything. And even the first strike can be a little bit, you know, at this particular phase, not so rewarding. Eventually it is, and of course the futures is powerful as well. So, bye in the meantime. Just in case you uh, were not paying attention to things, which of course I wasn't at this particular stage. Uh, comes out of base, here we go. I was talking to you about Karthus and we're looking about other things. She gets this kill, she dies, unlucky 311. We have the anti flashing of the wall here. With the bottom wave crashing in this situation, they've gone back to base now. We hold this wave and take this. That is getting nerfed again. Getting nerfed again. Because laner leeching is still a thing. And nothing feels worse as a jungler than making good plays. And the other guy just gets to hold a wave and, and get free stuff, right? So we want to try and avoid those things as well. Herald used. Free cash money. Dragons up. Karthus is seen on the top side. We watch, we watch, we observe. There we go, sir. The bottom wave tries to contest here with vision. No need, just go straight for this. You have numbers, so... You should be able to do this easily. Now, you know the Karthus will most likely reset. Come down to the Dragon Pit here. We have R available. He's actually there. You know, as I say these things, uh, random stuff happens. He actually walks all the way down here with 388 in pocket. See, that's the downside. Walks straight and cross. 
spit across the, the Syndra. Now it goes into his jungle, which of course we see and track. So we have three kills here. Um, I don't know if I would do that. Now, I don't want to results based it. I don't want to results base this at all. Because we didn't get kills. Okay, good. We didn't get kills. Good. Here, the fact of the matter is the guy's super duper low. Has to retract and go back to base. I would rather me be in his head while I'm doing stuff than me trying to match him, right? So the guy's super low. Has to walk back because he sees you. Knows you could R, so he's going to keep walking. Now he has to go back to base and come out. Why not use that time just to take his Gromp and his, uh, his, his blue as well? Boom, free kill. Karthus presses buttons. Might as well, right? Might as well. 5-1-1. <laughs> this is a pretty good early game from the Vi, though. Like, this player has been not such a good rank for most of their career. Very high level account in terms of like actual levels. Like 860 or something like this. You know, plays the game, maybe a little coin flip. Joys their champions. Hecarim, Evelyn, Vi, these are seen across the board. But, uh, you know, never really left Diamond until this this first split, I, I think. I can just alt tab and have a look here. Okay, actually reached Master Tier the first time. This split, 250 LP, and then decayed all the way back down to Platinum. Sorry, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, decayed all the way back down to Diamond 2-ish rank. And that's where we are right now. So you can see these kinds of plays are what got her there, right? But obviously, if you're not consistent with this stuff, you drop back down. And again, you used to decay down to Platinum. You didn't play in Master Plus, Challenger, GM. You just didn't play, you didn't play, you didn't play, you decayed all the way back down to Platinum 1. Now you still do, except it's Emerald 1. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens with this game, because it looks pretty stable, but, you know, in these particular games, this is a strong, Zaya is a strong, Lissandra can do a lot, Cassandra is a champion. Uh, Trinomir is two levels up, but again, we've seen Trinomir's split push and throw quite a lot. So, we're going to go ahead and take this Herald. And uh, let's see what we do with it. 5 one one lead. Karthus roaming to the mid lane here. Ult coming through, flashing to try and get the final squelch ball onto Lissandra, who just needs to keep her distance, give it to the Karthus. Very, very good. Vi shows up here with the Annie support, pushing the Cassandra out again. Trinomir is going to snack this. You know, I don't have an issue with this, but you're also wasting a lot of time. Because your team has this turret, you're not going to punch a tier 2 yet with this. They just gank this, you can always just affect yourself full back. Hold this, back to base if you need to. We did go full lethality, which against that comp... Yeah, <laughs> not always a fan of, but let's see how we go. Grump, Wolves, mid lane push, Cassante is going back to base. By Shadows on all the way down, looking to make a pick, looking to make a pick. The bottom lane turret is available. Slides into the brush here, hopefully with decent vision, doesn't get detected. Obviously, we do have the Emerald Glaive, but uh, uh, we need to wait for that active to go up. So, I'm going to punch it right now, and he's moving it down. A little bit of stalling here, which is why I like this tier uh, 2 Herald, the second spawner. Oof, that Ash ult. There we go, Flash Q. I like the second Herald here to either punch a real macro situation. Uh-oh, Kav is pressing the button. I like it because what it allows is either a shove here for like rotational macro. So say the games were equal or your team's losing in these situations. And you want to really force them to rotate so your team that's losing has a bit of pressure release. Then a nice punch here, you know, say this turret's a bit more, uh, you know, higher HP and things like this with the Trinomir, no Annie. Go ahead and punch it now. We kill the Cassante, we take this turret with the Herald, we take this turret with the Herald, we force people to rotate. That allows our mid laners and bottom laners to push up a little bit. But in games like this, this is gone. This is kind of low, and I don't think we'll have an issue taking it. But I want my ADC to start to roam with us and use her kit. Uh, and there's only one person down here. Let's activate the Herald now. So that was a good usage of that second Herald. And of course here, Tier 2 activated as well. So, shifted focus with reward. Very, very good. Karthus is compromised wholly by his level 1. Level 1, first clear. He's level 3. Uh, he needed to not die to the Vi to give it the snowball. He needed to be a bit more uh, intelligent with some of his ganks and ultimates. And he's just kind of vibing and he's down on CS, you know. With the Karthus there in those situations, what you want to make sure you're doing if your Karthus is uh, try and use the Vi's activity against her, right? Make sure you're taking some camps away from her, which of course we weren't doing. Uh, do we get the Zaya? Yes, we do. Thank you, Ash. But of course, the Vi goes way too ham with that build and dies. Trinomir has no ult now. 
Spin to win. Woo. And he shows up. Few people by themselves. Cut this now. Here you go. See? Take some camps. Take your blue. Push the bot lane. There you go. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. That's fine. Keep pushing. Wait for the Vise respawn cool. You got about 20 seconds before she shows. So we can pull back on this one. There you go. Hit the plan if you need to see something, which I kind of like to do. I see you. And if you can collapse in here, do so. But can we? Unlikely. Now we base. We, need to, we do need to do something about the top side. I think. Uh, yesterday's jungle detail. Part of one of the packages. Was about um, a game where we had a challenger level game. Team Blue team 10k ahead. Sieging in all the inhibs and everything. Red team 10k behind. And I took it from... I looked at it from both perspectives. How red team would have to play to come back. And how blue team would have to play to throw. Of course, in this example, blue team throw and red team come back. But it's very easy to see why teams in these kinds of games with these kinds of leads throw. And a lot of it is this stuff. Like, why are we down here? But at the same time, we're full clearing, right? Could we not have cut in to shadow our team for some pressure, right? That's always what you think about here. Ah, this is way too far along. Speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, please. Catch this. We take this. We take this, right? Look at the map. Okay, look at the map. Look at the map. Right. Everyone is on the map looking to do stuff. So now you go farming instead of shadowing here for potential aggressive plays into this zone. Yeah, Trinomir is in base, but he can probably go catch bottom wave as well. So if we can shadow this, all right, then we're in a good situation. Also, because we have an RNG scuttle coming up here, we've got this blue side we can fall back to. We don't need to do it now in, into this. We can shadow this, move into this if their camp is available, and then fall back to that if nothing happens. But if something does happen, we can affect it. So it's not always your fault. And they shouldn't be here. But you're not seeing any pings on the minimap. You're not seeing communication. TPs are committed. Um, we're not there to help. And I'm not necessarily saying, hey, you should be there to help. I'm saying you should think about it. And most people just full sequence without thinking about it. Because there's no pings. Like, you should be pinging them. No, 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 no. Push this up. I will shadow you if something happens. No reason to go down. They should all be pushing this. Now, when you see this, and you see this commit, you and Trinity are on the Baron right now. Right now, you two on the Baron. Go, 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 go. Snack it up. Seriously. Seriously. Go to Baron right now. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. I think you can probably get it. I think you honestly can probably get it. Uh, although I will plead a little bit ignorant about the three lethality item fine. Pretty sure you can still do it, but um, regular vibe builds will make this journey a little easier, right? Um, now they think you might be on it until, of course, everyone shows, when, by which case it's already dead. We push up this way, full back, safely, full back. Trinity is flanking by himself. Ash arrow is coming through. Can we do something for we too? No, we cannot. Waste of an ash arrow. Everyone is respawning. Hopefully. Push this up a little bit. Sentra has TP back in. Not TP back in, excuse me, but uh, she's uh, flanked from the side. No, she did TP back in. Why, do, why does it look like a knight there? Uh, uh, I'm still residually sick. TP's in where there's vision. Tries to go in here. Gets shoved out completely. Zero impact TP, basically. And he does the button pressing. Vi goes all the way in to kill the Lissandra now. But with this build, while that's great, you die. And a one-for-one one isn't that great. Now, Karthus press ult will most likely kill the Syndra there, which of course he does. And now we're losing the HP battle. Boy. See? And I don't want to, like, Trinomir things. Trinomir, Annie, Ash things, cool, whatever. Um, you get bailed out by your team, but I don't like builds where you go in, guarantee a kill, and kill yourself afterward. Uh, you can kill people with the regular builds and still survive enough to kill another person and be present for your team. Just my two cents on the, on the matter, basically. Now we roam down to the mid lane here. We see a Cassante is out of position. See, that's what it's good for. This is what it's good for. The skirmishing. Hey, someone is out of position. Free kill. Hey, someone else rotated one at a time. Free kill. Hey, they overchased. Free kill, right? This is where it's good. But if the enemy team bundles up, you're not going to have these opportunities, which you saw on the mid lane tier 2 die of a second over here. Now she goes back to Krugs for uh, healings. Zaya kills Alessandra. You can just do the dragon. Do the dragon. Your Q should be in a really short cooldown at this particular stage. Yeah. Let him die. Do the dragon. Cool. Watch this. Watch this. All right, Karthus is dead. They're low. They have to reset. We can easily go Baron now. Yes, I like the call. They know you're doing it, but there's nothing they can do about it. Go back to your Grump and to your Wolves. Yes, 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 yes. We like this. Itemization spike. Yes, please. Uh, here, 100%, if you're going to play this build, I love a GA, man. I love a GA, although a Shoujin can work as well. 
GA plus Cyril does anybody? If you want to go full fist. <laughs> you probably need a more though. That's why I don't like the collector here at all. Like, I know people are building this full squishy um, vibe build as an off meta uh, variant, but there's a reason why it's not necessarily the, the standard way to play, right? It requires a bit more of an assassin focus. So, Jonami dies to the Cassandra who's beginning to get, well, he has one item, but that's a full build for him, basically. Ash pushes up the bottom wave. Now we're waiting to trap. Grump is up. See, I don't like these quiet moments. Uh, larger because we lacked a bit of macro pressure. Prefer to keep... There we go, this is better. Push the side wave, Cassandra shows up. If you can kill him, just kill him. Like, he's three levels down, you should be able to. Catch the wave here. Just watch the rotations. You're staring at the rotations. 131 is okay with this build. Still get Baron. Use it, use it, use it, use it. There's no real reason to rotate over, right? Keep the pressure here. Take this turret. There's no reason to rotate now. Because Ash is in base anyway. So if a bad fight happens, right? Keep your level lead up. Push this, push this, push this. The whole time, two bot, keep pushing, keep pushing. Ash is going to join your team. You can cut down and join this one. So I don't like that she cut a slow push short at this stage. Because look, it could be dead already. A waste of time. Could be dead. Now Karthus has rotated back over to the mid lane instead of us having pressure on tier 3, which we should. And now they've engaged and killed our team. I do believe with a better pressure a system here, we would have actually been better off. But hey, Karthus is 15 now. Getting there, getting there. Wards, split push, 3v1. Trinomir Gaming, such as it is. Hello, are you an ADC? Can I interest you in the uh, good word of death? Okay, I'm just going to go on the Cassante anyway because I can kill him, I think. Uh, he becomes unstoppable, traps me against the wall. Now I'm 3v1 in the back line with a weird, weird build. I'm able to survive a little bit, get some life steal, but then I die anyway. Uh, okay, don't agree with that decision, but hey, you know what? Target selection in these situations is the most important. We have here the Trinity not splitting on the bottom side. TP committed by the Lissandra to hold. They'll get a free dragon for it. And this is why these builds and these decisions are not always the best. Hey, she's doing it <laughs> with, a, with a black cleaver. I like that. Like for a full damage build, I don't mind it. It has power. It's good. It's good. But you're, you're seeing the very real downsides here that you're a lot more reliant on your team now. But you had strong macro presence for a singular pick. Sunday shows up, you do get the Q2, we get the Q1, Q2, we get the R, we get the Q3. Uh, such is the way. Bye now. Basically, a little bit of macro pressure here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Trinity just goes up for the splitting. We're sieging up a Baron, it's so typical stuff. But you see why people throw this lead, right? Look at this. Sandra goes in, we have a, a very squishy build. We go into the back line here, which allows us to eviscerate two people. Assassin based build, which is great. But, there are downsides to it. Now we got two people alive. We are relying on our Trinomir not to throw this. We're relying on our Trinomir to rotate over. Still, if you can kill two, nice arrow ruler. If we can kill two or three with this build and your positioning is good, target selection is good, you saw the burst damage, right? It's insane. That's fine. Do it. If you're climbing with it, do it. Just like with Briar, it's not the best build objectively. But if you're finding ways and angles that others are not and you're having success with that build, keep going. Just understand that where the downsides lie. Most people's case, they don't. So, uh, we regather in the mid lane here. Vi is able to see, look at this. This is where it's nice, right? Stunned. Huge to gap close. R in. Boom. That auto E is just lethal. But now we're super duper low. And without GA, we could die. We should die. We do die. And there it is, my problem. Scale and team combat. Of course, Trinomir is playing as well. We are being bailed out the hell by Trinomir. Because now you're seeing the Karthus. We'll look at the stats in a second here. Baron, okay, good. 36 seconds. Just go take the Dragon Soul, please. Thank you so much, dear. Appreciate that. TP committed again. A little bit of a zone. All right, let's see the Karthus' stats. Uh, 4.8 on that one. And cash money gold. Gold gain, 700. Well, not 1,500, but uh, he'll get there eventually. Still, gold is to give you better items sooner, to give you better one-shots sooner to help you scaling in more blind fashion. Um, but none of that matters if, 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 
Ray respawns. Lord Dominic's regards completed. Which is interesting, because obviously you want to use the Giant Slayer passive, where they have greater health than you. Uh, we currently have 2,700 health. Uh, Lissandra has uh, 2,200. Uh, she has 2,500. He has 3,600. Obviously, it works on him. And we'll see the Karthus when he respawns. In a bit. The Rakan as well. But you're not getting the same value. I think you're not getting the value you think you're getting. 2,874. That's close. That's why I said Cyrilda's. But, yeah. It will work against the Cassandra, which is great. And it might actually work against the Karthus. We'll check his HP afterwards. Go full backline here where the Karthus is dead. Make sure we get those kills. Ryze trying her best to survive here. Obviously, dies as well. Now they got three available, Ash and Annie by themselves, three people died, we lost a 4v5 because we have no real true frontline. And here we go again, Karthus, can I click you, sir? 2.5. So, are you fighting the Cassante and the Rakan, where Giant Slayer Passive is going to give you stuff? Not as much. It's fine, especially with Collector, but, you know. I see 13-7. I see seven deaths. I see off the map. I see the reason we're not able to close. Now we're sieging again, right? Serpent's Fang is in the pocket here as well. Umbral has been sold for that. You know, they go all in on our team. Just absolutely disgusting. Lasadra engaged with Isaiah. That was insane. Annie and Vire out of position. Trinity is by himself. That's why this takes so damn long. And it's nothing to do with, hey, will we win? Won't we win? In Diamond, you guys should still be able to win this game. You understand these things. Oh, look, one person by himself. Cool, I can kill them. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you so much. But it's about the rest of the 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 rest of the, the team dynamics. Elder's the play, right? We take the Baron because we have two inhibs down. But obviously the thing that we're, we're trying to be very uh, aware of here is the Elder spawn. Going to be coming up. And I don't think this game should have taken 40 minutes. And I think it largely took 40 minutes because we died and causing a numbers disadvantage in numerous occasions. Yeah, our team didn't play things perfectly. But this is a great example of where this kind of build needs to end the game quickly. And all I see is someone who's got 18 out of 34 KP, just over a 60%, relying on a lot of macro by the Trinomir and pressure by the team to hold when she's dead. And it's just not something I prefer. Look at the Karthus damage here. Starting to build. At this particular stage was full squishies, that's a lot more powerful. So the Karthus didn't play it right, but we are able to most likely position for this. Um, Karthus is dead, obviously, so... We didn't see it, but he died. And Elder Dragon will end the game. Yes! There's nothing more satisfying. Even if you're playing this game, you're thinking, look, man, we should have closed early. Then winning this on an Elder Dragon with the sound of the relief, really good, so... Hopefully see some good pros for the invades, but what else you have to think about to avoid them? How to close out games quicker. Just a, a solid learning game, I think. Thank you very much for watching. See you all in the next one.